Now we're going to try to figure out how to mathematically show where those bright and dark fringes are going to be. So we need to think about two length scales. One is thinking about the distance between these two screens, and one is zooming in so we really see these two slits. Keeping in mind that again, this distance here is probably half a millimeter, and this distance here might be say one to five meters. So these are very, very different length scales. But when we look at this, we can see that there's going to be an angle that they share. If we're really far away and we say that the angle from one of the slits is theta, well, it's so far away that really the angle from the second one is theta. Now, it is true that they are ever so slightly different angle to this spot. However, that's a really small effect given that this distance is so big. So right because that's basically there's this y value here and if that y value is a few centimeters then that difference here of 0.5 millimeters and then the fact that you're actually doing tangent um, makes it pretty minimal. So there's one angle to think about from effectively the center of our double slit over but then when we zoom in on the slit we see that we need to think about path length difference and what we do is drop a line down that is actually perpendicular here and so taking this point and going over to the screen to the right they would share that path that path length but there's this difference here that is the path length difference so if we're thinking about a spot on the top half of the screen the light from the lower slit had to travel just a little bit farther. Now everything here is actually symmetric. We don't actually um, show that but you can also think about the fact that there's this sort of a line too which is also theta. So in this case if we thought about a point down here we would be flipping this picture upside down and this upper slit would actually have a little bit of a path length difference. So notice that this triangle here is going to share the same angle there. And thinking through this, um, it's just a, a little bit of, of geometry that I'm not going to quite do out here. But whatever theta we have out here is going to then match this angle here. So what's important to recognize is that that path length segment is going to be given by d sine theta and D here is that slit spacing. So the slit spacing actually depends on what your path length difference is. Notice that this is completely independent of what this length is, right? This does not depend on the separation between these. And right now we're talking about the angular dependence. So what we typically do is actually think about the positional dependence of these fringes and to do that we then need to focus on a different aspect of the geometry after we focus on the angle. So to figure out what angles we actually get constructive and destructive interference for we go back to our original idea that constructive interference occurs when you have a path length difference that is an integer number of wavelengths where that integer m can actually start at zero. So when we take this and say our path length difference is given by d sine theta, we can then take this idea and plug it up into this and now solve for sine theta. So we would get m lambda over d. Now simply mathematically it's going to be a lot easier to think about theta rather than sine theta. And we can do this as long as we're dealing with the small angle approximation. And as long as theta is in radians and is less than, say, 10 degrees, normally the angles we're talking about here are a few degrees, then it's okay to use the small angle approximation. But do remember that we need to talk about theta in radians to actually do this. We write this as less than 10 degrees since most of you have a better sense of degrees rather than radians. So now we have an equation that relates our angle to lambda over d with this integer showing you that there are different spots where you're going to have bright patterns versus uh, your dark fringes. So this is important 
uh, this is a good equation to understand. And again, this is going to be for our bright fringes. We're going to have a different equation later for the location of our dark fringes. Now, last, remember symmetry. So again, here, we are oh, keep talking about theta that's that way. So again, a position that's on the top half of the screen. But if you plug in one value of m and you get one value of theta, there's the theta that's up and then there's also the theta that's down. So we're always talking about something that's symmetric to kind of an up direction and a downward direction if we think about our screens being oriented vertically. Instead of talking about angle, we frequently talk about the physical spacing in centimeters, a linear spacing. And to do that, we then take our theta and just project it outwards, remembering that this distance here is L, again, typically a very large number, like a few meters. And so then you see that we just have this nice triangle here where you know an angle, it's a right triangle, and we know this side is L. So from that we can find what y is, which it can be expressed as L tangent of theta. So we know that our theta is given by this equation. We are again going to use the small angle approximation, so remember that theta must be in radians. Um, once you do that, you can re-express L tan theta as equal to L theta and get what that value of ym is. So when we do that, that is actually then equal to L theta itself. And we've had to multiply L on both sides to make that happen. So effectively, to rewind a little bit, we've just taken this equation, we've multiplied L on both sides, We've recognized that L times theta, as long as that's in radians, and we can use the small angle approximation, is equal to Y. Hence, we get to say that Y is equal to M lambda L over D. Okay? And again, M here is our integer. And again, for every value positive, there's also going to be a value negative. So hopefully that's clear. Again, theta and working in angles kind of how we derive what's going on. And then we just use a little bit of geometry and the separation between the screens to get the specific position. One question that you might be asked is what the fringe spacing is. And what that means is if we look at two of these bright spots, what is this delta y between them? And you maybe would be asked that an angle, but it's more common to be asked just like what's the distance? If this is one centimeter, what do you know? So we take this and we see that if we want to find the spacing between two fringes, those are two different values of m that are consecutive. So in this case, m equals 3 and m equals 4. Now, by keeping that general and just keeping it as m plus 1 and m, when we plug those values in here, we see that this first part out front is shared. Lambda L over D is shared. Then we have m plus 1 minus m. So that means that our m's cancel. So we get lambda L over D for our fringe spacing regardless of what fringe you're at. And what that means is that these are evenly spaced. The distance between them is equal. And that might seem like it's trivially uh, obvious, but in this case we can mathematically show that that's the case. So in some cases you might just actually count your fringes and say, well I've counted 10 fringes in 30 centimeters what then do I know? Well, you would know your fringe spacing based from that. Up till now, we've been talking about the location and the spacing of our bright fringes. We can also talk about our dark fringes. And really, the only difference in our math is that when we think about the path segment here, instead of wanting to be that path length difference, an integer number of wavelengths, it can be an integer and a half number of wavelengths, meaning that you have destructive interference. So all we have to do is take our previous equations and take m, which was an integer, giving our integer number of uh, wavelength separation in path, and instead making it m plus one half. So it's an integer and a half. So then we get the angles at which we have our dark spots or our dark fringes, and the positions in y that we have our, our dark spots. Note that m still starts at zero for this to be true. And re again, remember, that this is giving you the positions or the angles on the top half and that there's one equally spaced on the bottom half every time. So the fact that it starts at zero can be a little confusing because the first thing that you see 
at theta equals zero is actually a bright spot. So m equals zero, when you use this equation, corresponds to the sorry first dark spot you see. So keep in mind when you're counting that this is actually m equals zero, which is makes a little more sense when you're when you're on the bright spot. So your first dark spot corresponds to m equals zero.